21st day of abide in christ by andrew murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by christopher smith so will you have power in prayer if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you john chapter 15 verse 7 prayer is both one of the means and one of the fruits of union to christ as a means it is of unspeakable importance all the actings of faith all the pleadings of desire all the yearnings after a fuller surrender all the confessions of shortcoming and of sin all the exercises in which the soul gives up self and clings to christ find their utterance in prayer in each meditation on abiding in christ as some new feature of what scripture teaches concerning this blessed life is apprehended the first impulse of the believer is at once to look up to the father and pour out the heart into his and ask from him the full understanding and the full possession of what he has been shown in the word and it is the believer who is not content with this spontaneous expression of his hope but who takes time in secret prayer to wait until he has received and laid hold of what he has seen who will really grow strong in christ however feeble the soul's first abiding its prayer will be heard and it will find prayer one of the great means of abiding more abundantly but it is not so much as a means but as a fruit of the abiding that the saviour mentions it in the parable of the vine he does not think so much of prayer as we alas too exclusively do as a means of getting blessing for ourselves but as one of the chief channels of influence by which through us as fellow workers with god the blessings of christ's redemption are to be dispensed to the world he sets before himself and us the glory of the father in the extension of his kingdom as the object for which we have been made branches and he assures us that if we but abide in him we shall be israel's having power with god and man ours shall be the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availing much like elijah's for ungodly israel such prayer will be the fruit of our abiding in him and the means of bringing forth much fruit to the christian who is not abiding wholly in jesus the difficulties connected with prayer are often so great as to rob him of the comfort and the strength it could bring under the guise of humility he asks how one so unworthy could expect to have influence with the holy one he thinks of god's sovereignty his perfect wisdom and love and cannot see how his prayer can really have any distinct effect he prays but it is more because he cannot rest without prayer than from a loving faith that the prayer will be heard but what a blessed release from such questions and perplexities is given to the soul who is truly abiding in christ he realizes increasingly how it is in the real spiritual unity with christ that we are accepted and heard the union with the son of god is a life union we are in very deed one with him our prayer ascends as his prayer it is because we abide in him that we can ask what we will and it is given to us there are many reasons why this must be so one is that abiding in christ and having his words abiding in us teach us to pray in accordance with the will of god with the abiding in christ our self-will is kept down the thoughts and wishes of nature are brought into captivity to the thoughts and wishes of christ like-mindedness to christ grows upon us all our working and willing become transformed into harmony with his there is a deep and oft renewed heart searching to see whether the surrender has indeed been entire fervent prayer to the heart searching spirit that nothing may be kept back everything is yielded to the power of his life in us that it may exercise its sanctifying influence even on ordinary wishes and desires his holy spirit breathes through our whole being and without our being conscious how our desires as the breathings of the divine life are in conformity with the divine will and are fulfilled abiding in christ renews and sanctifies the will we ask what we will and it is given to us 
in close connection with this is the thought that the abiding in christ teaches the believer in prayer only to seek the glory of god in promising to answer prayer christ's one thought see john fourteen thirteen, is this that the father may be glorified in the son in his intercession on earth john seventeen this was his desire and plea in his intercession in heaven it is still his great object as the believer abides in christ the saviour breathes this desire into him the thought only the glory of god becomes more and more the keynote of the life hid in christ at first this subdues and quiets and makes the soul almost afraid to dare to entertain a wish lest it should not be to the father's glory but when once its supremacy has been accepted and everything yielded to it it comes with mighty power to elevate and enlarge the heart and open it to the vast field open to the glory of god abiding in christ the soul learns not only to desire but spiritually to discern what will be for god's glory and one of the first conditions of acceptable prayer is fulfilled in it when as the fruit of its union with christ the whole mind is brought into harmony with that of the son as he said father glorify thy name once more abiding in christ we can fully avail ourselves of the name of christ asking in the name of another means that that other authorized me and sent me to ask and wants to be considered as asking himself he wants the favor done to him believers often try to think of the name of jesus and his merits and to argue themselves into the faith that they will be heard while they painfully feel how little they have of the faith of his name they are not living wholly in jesus name it is only when they begin to pray that they want to take up that name and use it this cannot be the promise whatsoever ye ask in my name may not be severed from the command whatsoever ye do do all in the name of the lord jesus if the name of christ is to be holy at my disposal so that i may have the full command of it for all i will it must be because i first put myself wholly at his disposal so that he has free and full command of me it is the abiding in christ that gives the right and power to use his name with confidence to christ the father refuses nothing abiding in christ i come to the father as one with him his righteousness is in me his spirit is in me the father sees the son in me and gives me my petition it is not as so many think by a sort of imputation that the father looks upon us as if we were in christ though we are not in him no the father wants to see us living in him thus shall our prayer really have power to prevail abiding in christ not only renews the will to pray aright but secures the full power of his merits to us again abiding in christ also works in us the faith that alone can obtain an answer according to your faith be it unto you this is one of the laws of the kingdom believe that ye receive and ye shall have this faith rests upon and is rooted in the word but is something infinitely higher than the mere logical conclusion god has promised i shall obtain no faith as a spiritual act depends upon the words abiding in us as living powers and so upon the state of the whole inner life without fasting and prayer mark nine twenty nine without humility and a spiritual mind john five forty four without a wholehearted obedience first john three twenty two there cannot be this living faith but as the soul abides in christ and grows into the consciousness of its union with him and sees how entirely it is he who makes it and its petition acceptable it dares to claim an answer because it knows itself one with him it was by faith it learned to abide in him as the fruit of that faith it rises to a larger faith in all that god has promised to be and to do it learns to breathe its prayers in the deep quiet confident assurance we know we have the petition we ask of him abiding in christ further keeps us in the place where the answer can be bestowed 
some believers pray earnestly for blessing but when god comes and looks for them to bless them they are not to be found they never thought that the blessing must not only be asked but waited for and received in prayer abiding in christ is the place for receiving answers out of him the answer could be dangerous we should consume it on our lusts james four three many of the richest answers say for spiritual grace or for power to work and to bless can only come in the shape of a larger experience of what god makes christ to us the fullness is in him abiding in him is the condition of power in prayer because the answer is treasured up and bestowed in him believer abide in christ for there is the school of prayer mighty effectual answer-bringing prayer abide in him and thou shalt learn what to so many is a mystery that the secret of the prayer of faith is the life of faith the life that abides in christ alone end of twenty-first day